Hey, what's good everybody? My name is Alchemy and welcome to the channel. I just did my gig last night. I've got this mix uploading right now as we speak and I'm off camera because I'm just exhausted. So I have gotten a couple of inquiries about people asking me about how I've developed a, a means of working so quickly and a means of putting a track together in a matter of hours. And I kind of just wanted to speak on that just because I don't really think that there is necessarily a secret to it, but perhaps having a mindset of the cultivation aspect could be helpful. So how do how does somebody do that? How does somebody whip up a track together in such a small amount of time? I want it to be clear that there's a lot of different ways to solve a problem. And it's really important to consider that everybody has their own way of doing things and that, you know, you kind of at the end of the day have to figure out what works for you. So be like Bruce Lee and take what's useful, discard what's useless and all that other shit that I hate when people quote. Here's the thing. In theory, if you have all the sounds that you want at your fingertips, let's say we've got a loop, whatever this is. Cool. Now we've got a bass loop. Cool. I don't know what this is, but whatever. Uh, I'm not going to play this out because I think it's going to sound like crap. But then you've got, you know, uh, I'm going to type in my buddy Zane Wolf because he's got excellent sample packs and stuff. But um, check this out. Zane Wolf loop. Drum loop, drum loop, drum loop, miscellaneous loop, pad loop. Okay. Let's pretend like all of these are in key, right? Well, look, I've got my drums, I've got my bass, I've got my pad, and there you go. I've got an idea together. So that's step one, right? Is streamlining the process of getting an idea together. And I would argue that like, or ask you a question and feel free to let me know in the comments of, hey, do you actually spend time trying to create ideas for a track or do you open up the doll and say, I'm just gonna write a track and see what happens? Do you have any planning that goes into how you write? Do you have any planning on how you cultivate or do you just finagle your way through things? And I want it to be clear again that like there's nothing wrong with doing either or. I've seen some people work some really crazy magic just from constant messing around and being patient with it. But when it comes into being efficient, like if you have an idea and you know the steps and the means in which to take it, like it's gonna come together much quickly or much faster, right? So what about how do I get to an idea so fast if I don't want, if I'm actually doing the sound design from scratch? Well, <coughs> excuse me, well, it's the same thing. You start with something, you put something on the canvas or you, you know, produce a sound, a, a tone, a timbre, and you start fishing for different kinds of musical phrases or expressions that you can make into, say, like a beat, because in the context, I'm a beat maker, this is what we do, right? So in that case, the next piece of the cultivation is figuring out how to mess around to start getting something that you like. So let's say, you know, I'm going to take this drum loop or whatever and just hit this. And now I'm going to turn this down just a little bit, but okay, cool. So we start with this and I say, all right, I'm just going to grab a delay, cluster delay. Sure. Whatever. Let's set this to a hundred percent and please don't copy this. This is just saying, Hey, this is you like, I'm showing you that I'm streamlining the process of messing around and it's not, I don't do the same thing every time. In fact, I try to do something different, but my idea that I'm trying to do is say, Hey, I'm going to start with this sound or start with this loop and I'm going to toss it through a crap ton of effects in which to try to explore and see if I can find something musical out of it. And this is something that I talked about before about changing your perspective and about opening yourself up to hearing musicality. But until you spend time cultivating this skill in itself, it's not about what effects you put into it. It's about providing chaos and accepting what the outcome is. I think that's the best way I can say that. But if I'm listening to this and I just go, okay, here we go. Cool. So nothing jumped out to me immediately, but here we go. I've got this means of having something new to play with. And so through the mean, means of this, if I just kind of listen to it a couple of times. 
And being able to take an extra step perhaps into some other things, then perhaps what I can do is utilize this and make something new out of it. Or maybe I hear one particular thing that I'm like, that's cool. Like if you get one thing that's cool out of this, then it makes the process worth it. But if I go, okay, that's fine. So we'll, we'll use that as a piece of percussion later, um, which I'm not gonna start a track, but, but just understanding like how I get to stuff and how I do things, right? I'm typically like, my imagination works best or is most prolific, I guess, in drums and rhythm. So who's to say that I don't take this repitch here and I stretch this out and I would do other effects to this, but again, this is just purely conceptual, but let's take a listen to this, changing the form or manipulating this in a different way to try to expose myself to unheard sounds. All right, here we go. So. We post something here. I heard a cool little phrase. And what I'm gonna do is set this to loop and go like this and see how this sounds. Cool, let's go ahead and bounce that. Now I'm gonna go into uh, maybe Stretch HD and see what this sounds like. Cool. So that thing that I pulled out, I think it's this. Here we go. I've got a phrase. I've got a percussive loop. We go like this. And now I'm getting into the actual arrangement piece of this of connecting or building upon this idea, which goes into the next skill of how do you build upon an idea? Well, you harmonize, you uh, focus on building the groove, you focus on finding other sounds that are going to make a connection to the initial concept that enhance because this do 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 that is the centerpiece of whatever song i would write this is the 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 core of the idea in which the bass the melody everything will be wrapped around just this particular phrase and you know it to me it's easiest to do within how do you say, uh, within percussion and within something that actually has a rhythm because the music that I make is really wonky. It usually has like weird timings, not time signatures to be clear, because usually I do everything in four, four, but weird timings of it being a little bit off, but having this cool groove to where it picks back up. So if I were to post this now, I can say, all right, well, now there's a lot of other things that I can do with it to enhance this groove or to start changing this into a means that's going to complement. And that's the key term here is looking for something that complements this rhythm or creates contrast that that kind of works too. Uh, something that is like a polar opposite, I guess, or like uh, either this or that, I get. So. If I were to again, enhance this groove, something like this, and then maybe set the timing off, then what I'm doing is trying to place this. And again, like there's musicality that comes into this, right? Because if, if I just put everything on grid or just slap everything on there, then it's gonna sound a lot less quote unquote, Unpro a lot less professional. I don't know. What would you even say to that? I'm not even saying that this sounds professional, but what I am getting at is again, having that sense of it's got to hit at the right moment. You've got to have uh, an ear for how, about how you build this. So that seems kind of cool. What's this though? Okay. Okay. That was really sick. So now what I can do is post this here. Now I've got something else to work with. But do you see what I'm saying? It's like, I don't have to go very far in which to start hearing things or start kind of messing with different stuff to get an idea going. And the thing is, is that you need to be practicing this, not writing a full tune if you're trying to get efficient at working. Or, you, I mean, yeah, maybe maybe you do need to do something else, but because I don't know exactly where you are within your musical journey, but it's very important that you are building an ear for how to hear how stuff can work. And I, I'm sorry, I don't want this video to sound redundant, but as a means of working efficiently, I have cultivated a skill at 
uh, exploring efficiently. Then I've cultivated a skill at throwing a beat together efficiently. I've cultivated the skill of writing the intro and outro efficiently. I've cultivated how to make drums efficiently and all that stuff, but I'm taking it piece by piece and breaking each thing down. But when it comes into actually just getting an idea going, it doesn't need to sound professional right out the gate. In fact, it doesn't need to sound professional at all because what are you trying to do, you know? And there's also something to be said for taking your time because there are things that do pay off from slowing down but it all depends on how you like to work and what your goal is. I've got a buddy who spends three to six months on a track. I try to spend two days, two, three days maximum on tracks. Now, does that change the quality of the outcome or whatever? I don't know. Does that make him a better producer than I am or me a better producer than him? No, of course not. It's just how we like to work and how we like to do things. And you're going to notice that your work is going to speak for itself when as you're cultivating your own skills and as you start doing things that you like but there's no rush man there's no rush spend all your time on a single beat if you want to uh if you're just trying to turn stuff out right if you want to get really efficient at writing then you need to do a beat a day you know take up the challenge that i did last november of every day i'm going to write a beat and my requirements were i need to write an intro i need to write a main section i need to write an outro and then study what goes into, okay, well, how do we make an excerpt of that? And it's synonymous, or I guess analogous, with, hey, I'm going to sketch every day, but I'm going to sketch maybe, you know, a rhino in a different artistic thing. You know, today I'm going to be doing manga. Today I'm going to be doing Tom and Jerry. Today I'm going to be doing, you know, surrealism or whatever. But like, dude, like art is so parallel with everything that... It's weird how it seems, at least in my experience, how I was able to make a lot of these connections, especially with visual art versus um, making it happen sonically. But I would say that all of the same ways that people cultivate their skills in one particular art form translates into the cultivation aspect of what you're doing with audio. And if you can compartmentalize and you can be aware of where your shortcomings are, then it will help you overcome those previous challenges. Because here's an example. All right, so I'm going to make everything from scratch because I'm just that person, right? Well, how do I make a kick from scratch? Well, now I got to go on fucking YouTube and I got to be like, all right, I'm watching an alchemy kick video, whatever. I'm just going to use myself as an example. Not that I make great kicks or whatever, but okay, I'm watching an alchemy kick video. Now I'm going to watch that video and then try to make a kick, but my kick doesn't quite sound as good as Alchemy's. So now I'm going to go into trying to figure out why Alchemy's kick sounds better than mine. And I'm going to sit there and fuck with it for two hours. Okay, I kind of got a kick that I'm kind of happy with. Now it's time to do a snare. Oh shit. Now suddenly you spent four hours making drums, you know, actually just a kick snare and you haven't even put a pattern together yet. You get what I mean? There's a time and place for everything, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't do things that way, but understand that you need to break your objectives apart in which to practice that cultivation. And even still, um, that's why some people say, you know, do sound design outside of uh, production or whatever, and there is some merit to that, and sometimes you end up doing a little bit of both in between when you're making stuff. But, you know, if I'm making kicks these days, I've made so many kicks I've made so many snares and I still cultivate that. I still practice it sometimes, very rarely, but but sometimes I still am like, today I'm making snares, today I'm making kicks, whatever. Um, but if you're constantly like using another reference and you're trying to memorize like a formula or something like that, and you're sitting there just messing with it, messing with it, messing with it, messing with it, you're not making any music. You get what I'm saying? Like, yo, like what cold, like what constitutes a beat? Like at its most simple form, what is a beat? It's a rhythm. So put a fucking rhythm together. And and I'm not trying to oversimplify it and say, ah, this is this, but this is just like the experience that I've cultivated over time as a means of like, yo, if you want to make music, then you need to become efficient at fortifying the fundamentals, the building blocks of what makes something what it is. Don't get caught up in the details. You know what I'm saying? Don't be like, ah, I need to make an alchemy neurobase and go watch all my videos and binge watch it and then try to copy it word for word and then be disappointed that you couldn't copy it exactly. Because it's not about that. Like obsessing over the sounds and, and whatnot is completely arbitrary 
It's a matter of using it as a means of inspiration and finding your own thing and embracing your own thing, embracing your own shortcomings of, no, like for me personally, I can't make music as good as Chi. I can't make music as good as Cage and all the other people that I look up to. But I can make music that sounds like Ian. That's my name, if you don't know me. I can make music that sounds like Alchemy. And the more that you play into that, and the more that you are saying, this is what I have in the moment, and you allow yourself to be in the moment, the more that you are going to find yourself as an artist, and not just with sound, but different things that you, you know, kind of find that you like to do. So in any case, you know, the reason why I can write music a lot more quickly than, especially than I used to be able to, is because one, usually I have solved a lot of the problems that became roadblocks. So whether that be technical or it be, you know, a lack of inspiration or it be a lack of intuition, I spent a lot of time cultivating how to overcome those. And I spent an ungodly amount of time talking to people about these philosophical things. Cause I didn't make this shit up guys. I'm just trying to put it in a means of like, if I were talking to myself 10 years ago, um, so yeah, you got a technical problem. You need to get good at solving it. So practice it. You know, if like, if, if you have the experience of solving a problem so many times that, you know, the answer off the top of your head, what's 35 times seven. Some people would be like, I know exactly what it is because you solved that problem so many times. Some people are like, yo, let me pull out a calculator. Some people go 35 times seven, you go seven times five, then you go seven times three, 21, carry the five, whatever, right? And then some people use the the new method, the, um, the STEM unit, which I have no idea how that works, but it is fascinating. Um, but you get what I'm saying? It's the same problem. But here's an easy one. What's one plus one? Two. Because you've done that problem since you were, I don't know, God knows. But you get what I'm saying? Music and artistic expression a lot of times works in the same way it might require a little bit of critical thinking, but that's why I say that the number one skill that you can cultivate is being resourceful and learning to think critically in the world of music. Because if you learn to be uh, cr not critical with your music, but you learn to think about different possibilities and about different means to explore and you're constantly moving, you're going to find something. It's going to keep moving. You're going to be schmoving, long story short. And I know this because I've been in a lot of your, you know, positions. Sometimes I still get myself into it and I have to, you know, take a minute to film a video like this and be like, yo, it doesn't have to be that complicated, but you need to become efficient at the problems that you're not very good at. If you suck at making bass lines, fucking practice making bass lines. If you're disappointed with the sounds that you're making, then for now, take a step back and use someone else's sounds, you know, go cop a sound pack for 20 bucks and you know, or go put a loop, you know, go take a baseline or something and just spend some time being like, why does this work? Why does this sound good? And make it make you ask more questions because that is how you cultivate. It's not, it's just this. It's, it's not this because every song is different, but it's saying, huh, okay, well, I like how this snare reacts to this and what makes that work? You know, is it something that's just placement? Is it something that's frequency based? Is it something that's uh, you know, is there something else that is making this add to it and have these conversations with people have this conversation with me because this is the kind of shit that I talk with people about, you know, it's not about how I make a fucking snare anymore. I've been there and done that. And, um, I understand that there's a time and a place for it, but I'm more concerned about why does this work? Why does this, what, what is the magic behind this? What makes this sound so freaking cool together? And once you practice cultivating that, the sounds, the timbre of your snare, whatever, totally becomes irrelevant. And it's just about how do I create a vibe? And if you can't create a vibe, you need to practice creating a vibe. And if you don't know how to practice creating a vibe, you need to study some music and be like, what makes this vibe? Like what makes the vibe what it is? And that's something that I don't think that I can teach you. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, I'm sorry if I sound like perhaps sarcastic or something. It's actually, I'm, I'm very passionate about this thing, but I also want to come at it as a means of like, don't overthink it um, and, and enjoy your process about how you do things. But understand that like, for one, working quickly doesn't always mean better. 
and two the more that you are sitting down in the studio and working effectively um, the more that you're going to cultivate that specific skill of I'm going to become more efficient and you know work faster or whatever but don't be don't begrudge the process maybe you know your finest moments are in doing that searching maybe you've resampled something 20 times and if you just do it one more time you might find something cool but you got to develop the intuition about knowing when it's time to do something else and when it's good enough and all that and that is your own personal journey and it's it's kind of grueling and it's very grindy and and very tedious sometimes but as you continue to get better at it i'm telling you this from personal experience as you continue to understand what makes something work and what something needs or you maybe for me like there's things that I'll toss in here that are okay at the moment and I'll go back and fix it later with like effects or resampling or you know placement um, then you don't worry about it so much and you just focus on completing the idea or shaping the idea or exploring the idea I think that's the best way to describe it because most of the music I make I don't know what I'm going to make I'm just going to be like all right I'm going to throw some shit together and something pops out but I've been doing it for 10 years. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've been doing this. I've been doing that same thing for 10 years. And there's something that came out on the other side of that, that I'm like, oh shit. Okay. I get it. Um, that's not to say that some amazing people didn't help me unlock some doors and get some perspective, but I had to be ready for that information. And for you to understand what I'm talking about and for this to make a connection with you, you have to be ready for that information as well. Uh, because a beginner is probably a, a super beginner is not going to understand anything of what I'm talking about other than the very specific uh, advice that I'm giving you. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, that's all I got for this one. And I would love to continue this conversation or bring up other topics that maybe I haven't covered. But, you know, what's what's been your struggles? I'm curious. I would love to make more videos about this. Uh, about anything regarding what I talked about what you know what are some things that you do to make your workflow more efficient um, share the information and put it in the comments and you know I'll respond to them and stuff um, aside from that I did my area 15 gig last night it was cool uh, shout out to Naked Civilian for uh, getting me booked um, you can check him out on SoundCloud um, in regards to that I put the mix up as we speak and uh, you can go listen to it. And if you want to see what the fuck my music is about, then you could check out the new mix. And other than that, I would love if you support the channel via alchemy.com, book a lesson with me, or consider becoming a member where I have all the technical information, master classes. This is how you do specific things uh, to offer. So thanks, everybody. I appreciate your time. And um, thank you for listening to me. Have a wonderful rest of your evening.